Hi everyone, and welcome back to Comics and Chill, where we are continuing with the Miller World comic book retrospective. So the first wave of books which I covered in the last video were released between 2003 and 2004, and it was quite a few years until we saw more Miller World titles. During this gap, Miller was working under an exclusive contract with Marvel, working on things like The Ultimates 2, Marvel Knights Spider-Man, Wolverine, Civil War, which was obviously taking up a lot of his time, but throughout this period at Marvel, he still remained one of the hottest writers in the comic book industry in that period. And I think his collaborators at the time knew this too, and so they came over with him onto this next batch of Miller World books, which was Kick-Ass, War Heroes, Nemesis, Superior, and Kick-Ass 2, all of which we're going to be covering in this video today. So first up we have Kick-Ass, and this book was huge when it came out. It's it could be argued that it's Miller World's most well-known title. It was released in 2008, the first issue came out in February, and it was put out through Marvel's Icon imprint, which was set up to give some of their creators that were under exclusive contracts with Marvel freedom to work on creator-owned stuff. It's basically the image deal, but still under contract with Marvel. And I'll say it up front, this is an all-round fantastic book. It was obviously written by Mark Miller, and had an incredible art team, of the legendary John Romita Jr., Tom Palmer inking him, and Dean White coloring him, and they were all firing on all cylinders for this book. And the concept is very simple. It's set in the real world, or a real world, where Marvel Comics exist, superhero comics exist, movies exist. They reference Spider-Man, Batman, etc. throughout this. The main character, him and his group of nerd friends, they're obsessed with comics, and he decides, why has no one done this for real? dons a costume and becomes a superhero known as Kick-Ass. And it plays into every nerd's fantasy. I don't care how old you are, if, you, if you're a superhero comic book fan, I would bet money that 99.9% .9 of you have had the fantasy of throwing on a costume, kicking some ass. And I would say that they execute that concept perfectly here. I think the main character is about 14 years old, and the story, you know, it starts with a bang, he's going out there to be a superhero and he has that 14 year old teenage delusion. And you kind of get caught up in that until the end of the first issue uh, where it shows, so it shows the delusion uh, and, and the heights of that, but then it also introduces the reality of what this situation would really be like, both with the mundane parts of being on patrol He's basically just walking the streets when he realizes that he can't jump across rooftops. And it also shows the reality of, you know, the extreme violence someone trying to be a real superhero would face when they run into the more extreme kind of criminal. On the off chance that you haven't read it, I definitely recommend giving this a read. And I will say no more about the story to save you from spoilers. But so far during this Miller World read through, I would say that this is the most well developed of the comics. It's eight issues long, it's wonderfully paced, and the art suits the concept perfectly. I'm assuming you know who John Romita Jr. is, and his crunchy, grounded style really sells the concept of this book. And going back and rereading this so soon after reading Wanted, it does give the book a different feel than it had the first time, especially during the opening narration about Dave talking about himself being the, the very first superhero. And when you've read Wanted and you know that the fraternity have wiped the general public's minds and relegated the existence of superheroes to comic books and movies, it is really cool to think of Dave as Ground Zero for the Fraternity's return in Big Game, which is coming out this summer. So next up, we have kind of an interesting addition to the Miller World comic books, uh, which is War Heroes. And this series was put out by Image Comics, not through Marvel's icon. And in the back matter of the first issue, Miller says basically that this is because he was curious to see what it would be like to work with Image. And this series is actually unfinished. It was planned to be six issues long, it was written by Mark Miller, it had artwork by Tony Harris, who you may know from Starman and Ex Machina. And it's quite an interesting concept. It's set in the mid-2000s. It was released in 2008, uh, and it's set in an alternate timeline during um, the war in the Middle East. And in this story, Washington comes under attack by a, a nuclear suicide bomber, and it causes them to ramp up their efforts in the war. But with... Uh, US soldier casualties being quite high and public support for the war being very low. America's not looking so great and no one wants to enlist to continue fighting the war. So to encourage people, 
the US military introduces the promise of giving every single soldier superpowers in the form of these pills. And the powers are temporary, but the soldiers can each take different pills, like a super speed pill, a flight pill, a telekinesis pill, that kind of thing. But the story really focuses on a group of con artists who enlist in the military so they can get a hold of these pills to sell on to a mystery buyer for $10 million. So they enlist, go through boot camp, get the pills, and then they find out that their mystery buyer is actually Al-Qaeda. And that's where the story takes a turn with a super-powered member of Al-Qaeda actually kidnapping one of the con artist's brothers, who is also a soldier, with plans to publicly execute him. And so the con artists have to change their plan in order to rescue this guy's brother. And just as they were setting up the story, that's pretty much where it ended, and there were no further issues released. I quite enjoyed it myself, but even though the series was unfinished, there was also a huge delay between issue 2 and 3. So issue 1 and 2, I think we're about 1 or 2 months apart, but then it took a full year for issue 3 to be released. And a lot of people assumed that this was the artist Tony Harris's fault, as I think he had been slow or maybe late on other projects in the past. But when he was asked about it, he said that he can't draw pages for scripts that he does not have, therefore implying that Miller was actually to blame for this. And outside of that, no one has really commented on this comic, it's pretty much uh, the existence of it within Miller World is not really acknowledged, much like the unfunnies. And yeah, it's kind of been ignored or ghosted by the creators, and I don't think that we're ever going to see it finished at this point, since it's been about 13 or 14 years since the last issue was released. Which is a shame, it was a good concept. And Miller had actually described this as being what he would have done with Ultimates 3 had he and Brian Hitch stayed on the book. With Ultimates 1 being uh, the concept of that kind of being if the military got hold of superpowers and then they were using it for defense. Ultimates 2 was kind of the corruption of that idea. And then Ultimates 3 would have been taking these superpowers and sending them in as an invading force to other countries. I would be very, very curious to find out exactly what happened with this series, why it didn't continue. They're pretty good if you want to check them out, but obviously it's unfinished, so it's not going to be a satisfying end for you. Okay, so next up we have the first volume of Nemesis, written by Miller with art by Steve McNiven, who he'd worked with prior on the Old Man Logan storyline. And this was also published by Icon through Marvel. And to be honest with you, this one is quite the letdown. I remember reading it at the time when it came out. And rereading it this week, uh, my feeling hasn't changed too much on it. I like the idea of basically an evil Batman. I know a lot of people crapped on that concept when this was coming out. And I think it was marketed in the way of what if Batman was the Joker. So my issue is not with the concept. My issue is mainly with how underdeveloped this comic feels. I find the idea quite interesting, but it is just kind of... It's taken out any sort of cleverness that Miller has sometimes. And it's just relied on the the shock value that he has so there's no real depth to it and if you haven't read this it's basically like i said what if the batman was the joker it's a it's a billionaire who has all these gadgets and a, a superhero costume and he basically picks a city that has a great police officer and then he just focuses all his efforts on terrorizing that police officer until ultimately he kills them and the story opens with him doing this to a police officer in tokyo and killing him and then he moves his sights onto a police officer in Washington. And in terms of story, that's that's pretty much it. So as well as the writing being kind of a little lazy and relying on shock value, Steve McNiven's artwork is also not quite up to the quality that uh, I was used to with his work on Civil War and Old Man Logan. It looks as though they were working straight from his pencils. I don't think there was an inker on this. And although the, the visual storytelling is, is just fine, there's not a lot of story to work with in the first place, and the backgrounds are kind of light on this too, just relying on a lot of um, color work to sort that out. But I am a fan of McNiven's, I just am not so into his work on this book. So yeah, I like the concept, just didn't like the execution. Luckily, as I mentioned in the previous video, this series was recently rebooted called Nemesis Reloaded and it just came out earlier this year. And the reboot of the series definitely fixes a lot of issues that I had with this first take on it. Okay, so next up in Miller World, we've got Gifford the Clown, and this series was absolutely... Oh, oh, hang on just a sec. Oh, sorry, this is one of mine. How'd that get in there?
Gifford the Clown is a high octane action adventure comic written by myself with phenomenal artwork by Joe Yeaman. I would definitely put him up there with Travis Charest, Otomore, Brian Hitch, and uh, he also reminds me a lot of Trevor Hessey. But he drew the hell out of this comic and it is wall to wall action. It is about a disposable clown mercenary who is sent on a mission to Kowloon, the walled city, to extract an informant. But when he and his partner land in the city, things go south quickly and they have to fight their way out. There's a link in the description where you can buy the comic, both digital and physical editions. And I'll also include a link to the trailer for the comic, so please be sure to check that out. But now back to Miller World. Next up we have Superior. I read it when it initially came out and I didn't have strong memories of it. I don't remember not liking it or loving it, but this time around I really, really enjoyed it. It is basically Big meets Superman. It has a very Spielberg vibe to it. And it's about a young kid who, his life is really hard. He has multiple sclerosis. And then he is visited by a magical space monkey who grants him one wish. And his wish is to become his favorite superhero from his favorite movies called Superior. And his wish is granted, he doesn't understand why it's happening. The monkey says he'll be back in one week to explain everything to him, but in that one week he can go wild, just be a superhero. And where Kick-Ass is kind of like a teenage wish fulfillment for kids that maybe want to be Spider-Man or maybe Batman or more street level superhero, I feel Superior is the teenage wish fulfillment for kids that wanted to be Superman. And it's a lot more light-hearted and fluffy, but not in a bad way, it's very wholesome. And with fantastic art by Lionel Francis Yu, like, he really sells it. With him having years of superhero comic experience, especially Superman Birthright, which uh, he'd worked on prior to this. And although this comic doesn't reinvent the wheel, it is a lot of fun. I definitely recommend reading it. Although I have no idea if or how this is going to tie into big game. I was actually kind of confused if this or how this took place within the same world as Kick-Ass. And in doing a little reading, I think you're actually... Superior takes place after Kick-Ass Volume 3. And without giving too many spoilers away, when the origin of the Space Monkey is revealed, the other Miller World book that I think this would more closely tie in with is actually chosen. But I will leave that up to you to discover for yourself. And then lastly, we have Kick-Ass 2. I don't have too much to say on this one other than it does not have as strong a direction as the first volume. The first volume is really tightly crafted, wonderfully paced, and with Kick-Ass 2, they were basically introducing a superhero street-level team into the situation, and it doesn't just it just doesn't quite have the same amount of focus as the first one. It's not bad, but um, it it doesn't have it doesn't pack the same punch as the first one. And I do feel that the art is not quite as quite as good as the first volume either. Where I'm wondering if Romita was actually providing more sort of um, breakdown level of pencils, which then Tom Palmer was finishing up with the inks. And actually, Dean White is using a different coloring style on this, where he is putting highlights over the top of the line work, which is a style I've seen him use in Hickman's Avengers and on another Romita book, the Rick Remender run of Captain America and I like it there but it just I preferred the color style of the first series on this it helped hold that sort of gritty vibe of the story together and there you have it to wrap up kick ass definitely give it a read kick ass too probably give that a read as well just so you can complete the trilogy on that I've never read kick ass 3 so I don't know but I do know that these characters are tying into big game war heroes that's up to you if you want to check it out I enjoyed the issues I read but it has no ending so you may be unsatisfied but it is uh, an interesting forgotten curio of the Miller World universe we got Nemesis which to be honest with you after reading the reboot I think I don't know if they're still counting this as existing if this is still canon I would say you could probably skip it uh, after reading the reboot. Just read the reboot, but that's up to you. Superior, tons of fun. Definitely give it a whirl. And that's it for this week, guys. I'll be back next week where I'll be looking at Super Crooks, Kingsman the Secret Service, MPH, and more. And once more, if I can remind you to check out my comic, Gifford the Clown. Link is in the description. Incredible artwork by Joe Bieman. Non-stop action. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Take it easy.